Hello, ladies and gentlemen, coming to you on a decidedly cooler April 17th to again provide you a little bit of uh, information about how to look for plants in your situation. Uh, again, coming to you from the back of my patio, as you can, or the side of my patio, as you can see, I want to share with you some of the, the plants that are available to you, maybe close to where you live right now. So, remember angle, and we'll uh, pan down from my back patio to the some of the plants that I find near my knee right now. One of these is going to be extremely familiar to you because we looked at it in the last image. And if you don't already recognize that as white clover, for a few different reasons. Trifoliate leaves, palmately compound, little white chevron, and glowing, growing very close to the ground with stolons. Lack of obvious stipules, this tells us we're talking about white clover. Now there are other species also here. You might have noticed that there's a grass here that we haven't talked about before. And that grass is actually orchard grass. You remember when we entered the lecture and I talked about a species that I said that if there was any seed that would be considered that of the bears, any grass seed, it would be orchard grass because it had sort of a bear claw hook on it. Well, that's this species. It'll often look at sort of flattened as if a goose or something had set on it and made a, made a nest. But what I especially want you to notice is that these stems are flattened. This grass will grow in a little bit cooler weather um, than what or grow well and vigorously in a little bit cooler weather than what tall fescue does, so you'll often see it outgrow where it's in mixed lawns. But the fact that this leaf is flattened or folded in the sheath, part of the vernation, is one of the keys to identifying this particular species. Now one of the other keys that we need to look at is, of course, the ligule. I'm going to pick this individual up so we can look at it a little bit more closely, and if you can't see uh, the characteristics clearly on your own. You might borrow your parents or your grandparents or just uh, reading glasses or simply go to Walmart and find an inexpensive pair. I'm going to pull this leaf blade back so that you can see the ligule. The ligule is that sort of transparent membrane. I'm having difficulty get There you go. That membrane is relatively tall compared to what you would see in other species. And you'll also notice, if I can get the angle right, sorry for zooming in and out here as I try to get it with my other fingers, um, that we lack auricles. So there's no auricles on orchard grass. There is a membranous but truncated, meaning flattened on the top, sort of um, ligule. It might come to a bit of a peaked tooth in the middle, but the fact that it's flattened in the sheath and often sort of gray green in color is really important. The other thing that you should look for is that the back of this leaf, especially near the base, is sort of V-shaped and it flattens out as it gets closer to the tip. Okay, again, looking at this little clump that you'll find here, there are actually a lot of them. As we look around this tree, the gray green grasses are um, orchard grass mixed in with a fine-leafed tall fescue. Now, other species that we might find as we're walking around in this area um, could be something like this. Now, you might look at this and immediately think that, that this was uh, um, uh, white clover. This one does appear to be white clover, so you've got kind of a membranous stipule and the chevron, a lack of hairs, is this white clover where the stolons have been exposed and developed a little bit of color. That is not, however, the only clover that we'll find here on my back patio. Um, we'll take a little bit of a walk here and see if we can't find finally another individual. Notice that this one lacks the white chevrons and it appears to be covered, the stem is covered with fine hairs. Notice that the stipule also is not just a membrane but it's actually a well-developed fairly broad and long stipule. Now this plant normally would be growing in a more upright growth habit, but it has been limited by the frequent mowing to which it has been subjected. What we're looking at here is a flattened version of red clover, and the fact that it's covered with very fine and soft hairs clues us in that this is red clover. The stipules confirm it. And right next door, is a distant relative, also being a legume, is sweet clover. Notice that the 
leaf has got some teeth surrounding uh, almost the whole uh, margin or the whole external perimeter of the leaflet, which tells us it's not alfalfa. Alfalfa would only have the most extreme distant one-third tip of the tip uh, perimeter being covered. Um, so sweet clover still surviving in, in a frequently mowed environment is a fairly impressive member of this shady area. Now let's look and see what other species we might find. Let me slip off to a nearby individual. This individual, you notice it lacks the teeth. We've got a pinnately compound leaflet, a trifoliate leaf once again, um, some hairs on the leaf surface. If we look really closely at these leaf, at these hairs, we might find that they point downward. Downward pointing hairs and the rest of these characteristics tells us that we're looking at common Lespedeza.